Have you heard about imaginary numbers? If yes, and you still don't know, what do they really mean beyond some axioms and formulas? It's the video for you. Now, positive real numbers are easy to understand. They are used to count things, things that we can see, touch, and carry around. What about negative numbers? You can't count things with them. Now, when they were first thought of hundreds of years ago, they were considered useless. But now we know that negative numbers can be used in a whole lot of things. For example, loans, debt, car depreciation. I mean, you can't see or touch the debt, but you can certainly feel it, isn't it? If we square a positive number, which means we multiply it with itself, we always get a positive number. The opposite of this process is called taking a square root of a number. Simple enough. When we multiply two negative numbers, we always get a positive number. You may ask why? Well, have you heard that the enemy of an enemy is a friend? Or the opposite of an opposite is the same? I have made a detailed video about it in case you are interested. But the bottom line is that the square of any number is always positive. How do we take a square root of minus 100 or any negative number for that matter? Now, in case of 100, we can play a small trick. If we multiply it by 1, which doesn't change anything, in that case, the 10 can come out and minus 1 remains under the square root. Now, we are stuck with minus 1. What do we do with it? The square root of minus 1 is undefined. And it's called an imaginary number. Mathematicians came up with this idea. Mathematicians do have imagination, believe me. The basic operations of imaginary numbers are simple. If you square the i, you get minus 1. Because square root is nothing but taking the half of something. And when you square it, you get 1. And minus 1 raised to the power 1 is just minus 1. So you can play this game. So taking the cube of imaginary number is minus i and so forth. Now, if you have $100 and you want to lend it to a friend in $10 installments, if you take a square root of it, you know that you would need to give $10 for 10 weeks to give $100. After the loan is given, in your account books, you are short of $100 or minus 100. Now you expect installments, it's a loan. So what do you do? You can take a square root of 100 minus 100 and again 10 comes out and minus 1 and minus 1 square root is an imaginary number denoted by the symbol i. So you expect 10i installments over 10i weeks. So these are imaginary installments and imaginary weeks because they haven't happened. They may or may not happen. And But once you get them, then you get your minus $100 back. Now this analogy may give you some idea how to get the physical meaning out of imaginary numbers. Here's another way of looking at imaginary numbers. Now the real numbers live on the x-axis. The positive numbers to the right and the negative numbers to the left of the zero. And the imaginary axis is the y-axis. So if you go from plus 100 and you multiply by imaginary number, you get 100i. And if you multiply 100i by another i, you get minus 100. And then again, you can go back to plus 100. So what you're seeing is it's a back and forth phenomena, which is a wave phenomena. And that has important implications.
Now, where do you find imaginary numbers? Well, in quantum physics, they are very important. We are all made of atoms, and atoms are basically waves. And waves are back and forth phenomena, and they need imaginary numbers to describe them. So the Schrodinger equation or Dirac equation, which are important equations that describe atomic behavior, you will see imaginary numbers i stuck in them. So they are important in our existence. Let's end on an imaginary poem. Let your imagination go wild. If you veer off the course and roam like a lost child, if you lose all hope and only see the problems that have piled, remember, you can carve your own path and live the life you styled. Thank you for watching.